So we looked at carbohydrates uh, as the first group of biological molecules. You should be able to sketch out a simple sugar structure, a linear form, be able to explain how and identify how it would form a ring structure, and then see how the ring structures form complex carbohydrates, uh, looking at and explaining some of the differences between those types. Now we're going to move on to another group of molecules called the lipids. Uh, and what we're going to start off with is this structure here, which is what we call a fatty acid. So you can see it is a long chain of carbons. All right. So 13 to 17 carbons are common. It's variable, the length of these carbons here. And then different specific fatty acids will have different numbers of carbons that make them up and other characteristics as well. And then there's going to be this, the acid part. So, as you look at functional groups, right, one of our functional groups is um, the carboxyl group. Uh, and the carboxyl group acts as an acid, a weak acid. What that means is that it can have it can lose a proton, essentially, or donate a proton to solution. That's the action of an acid. Acids add protons to solution. Uh, the reason for this, again, is be because um, the carbon and oxygen are unequal in their sharing of electrons. So are these here, and so are the oxygen and the hydrogen unequal in sharing. So they'd be all polar bonds to start with. But in this particular case, the oxygen down here can even draw on that hydrogen, its pull, its electronegativity can affect it and it increases sort of the amount of pull so much so that the proton can be lost or donated. Because it would take on a negative charge means it would attract positive charges so it can come back, All right? and, and it does. So but we're gonna draw it not in the ionized form. Uh, we're gonna draw it uh, simply in this form here. Um, but just keep in mind that's the acid part when we talk about a, a carboxylic acid, but this is the part that that's actually gonna be polar it can interact with water. The whole rest of it, this whole entire thing, nonpolar. So overall, very, almost the entire molecule is nonpolar. And then there's this one part that is, that is polar for it. So that's the first thing to, to know. In terms of the structure of a fatty acid, they tend to be linear molecules, just like I drew it here, except, um, so this might be one type of fatty acid but then there might be another type of fatty acid that's like this, sort of a different shape. And you can ask, well, why, why is that? Um, this is the type of fatty acid shape that's going to be from a saturated fatty acid, and this one is gonna be an unsaturated one. So what do we mean by saturated or saturated with what? Well, a saturated fatty acid is saturated with Hydrogen, so that means essentially every carbon has the maximum number of hydrogens that it can possibly hold. So all of them in this chain have two, except for the one on the end, which has the, the third, right? And then there's the carboxyl group, which is different, right? Because that has the oxygen. So, but for all the others, this is, these are the ones we're talking about. Unsaturated obviously means it's gonna have fewer hydrogens, not gonna be saturated with hydrogen. So what's gonna happen there? Somewhere within the structure, two of the carbons are going to form a double bond with each other. And wherever it happens to be that those two carbons are double bonded, that part of the structure is going to bend right, at that double bond and change shape. So the unsaturated fatty acids have this kinked or bent shape to them whereas the saturated fatty acids are straight. And that is going to be important later on because as we start to pack together the fatty acids to make some of the larger lipid molecules, we're gonna see the characteristic of these fatty acids themselves will determine how many we can pack together, which will affect how flexible or fluid uh, that those other molecules are. So fatty acids can exist on their own as free, called free fatty acids, but usually fatty acids are stored as part of a larger molecule uh, we call a lipid. And this particular type of lipid that we're gonna talk about is called a tri 
triglyceride. So the triglyceride, we'll talk this first part here, starts off with a glycerol molecule. So if you look at the structure as I start to sketch it out here, it's going to be a lot like one of your sugar molecules with an exception. Right? Can you think what that exception is? Three carbons, three oxygens. That follows the formula, but there's no double bond here. These are just hydroxyl, hydroxyl, hydroxyl groups. All right, so this is called glycerol, uh, an alcohol type molecule. Now, these fatty acids are going to become oriented with their carboxyl group toward one of these OH groups. And so I'm just going to dot, 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 dot this because it's too much really to draw. And then we're going to have, if you remember, the condensation reaction, right? The condensation reaction, two things happened, right? We formed water and we form a new bond. So in this particular case, what's going to happen is we need oxygen and hydrogen to form a water molecule. And then we're going to form a new bond here. And that carbon-oxygen double bond stays. It stays there. And so that's one. But now we have this thing we called a triglyceride. So essentially, the same process can happen a few more times. this and dot 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 you get the idea here um, water molecules would be released with each of these so be multiple multiple water molecules coming out one two three water molecules to make these three bonds and overall you know generically this is a triglyceride now so triglycerides are also what we call fats And fats, we often refer to as being saturated or unsaturated. So when we talk about saturated fats and unsaturated fats, for example, two very common ones that, that you're probably familiar with, butter and olive oil. Both of these are triglycerides. Both of these are molecules made up of one glycerol and three fatty acids. So there's one glycerol and three fatty acids. That's a triglyceride. But they're different, right? At room temperature, butter sits out and it is a solid. At room temperature, olive oil is a, is a liquid. It is an oil. All right. So what's the difference? If they're, all, if they're both made up of glycerol and three fatty acids, what makes them different? At the same temperature, what's going to happen is that olive oil has carbon oxygen double bonds so it is unsaturated whereas butter is going to be saturated so butter is composed of fatty acids that have a full complement of hydrogens all three of them and so they're very straight and so they can be packed together really tight and the tighter they can be packed together, the less movement there is between them, so the less fluid they are, the more solid they are. And so at room temperature, they stay solid. Whereas the olive oil, olive oil has the double bonds between the carbons. So in that particular case, the, the bonding, which do a little one like this here, representing the straight line being the glycerol, and then these representing the fatty acid tails, you see with um, say with a butter with a saturated they can be packed close together like this but with the unsaturated here uh, the tails being bent are gonna create space between them push them apart and there's gonna be a lot more 
ability to move, uh, and that's going to make the, more, the overall structures more flexible that are formed from them, and they'll be more fluid. So we end up getting an oil-like structure from them. So our first type of lipid to look at, which starts off with a fatty acid, is the triglyceride. Okay, um, And so what, what you need to know is triglycerides are made up of one glycerol, three fatty acids. What's the structure of a fatty acid? You're not going to have to know any specific fatty acids, just the overall structure that they can vary in their numbers of carbons. They can vary in whether they have double bonds or not. Um, and where those double bonds are located, that can vary. So you can have a whole variety of different kinds of these molecules just by having uh, small changes in that chemical structure. Um, and there can also be a type that is called a polyunsaturated. So if we had multiple double bonds, so double bonds in several locations, uh, what that would do to the structure is then just cause it to bend you know, several times. You would get multiple bends every time there was a, every time there was a carbon carbon double bond the structure would bend and you can get more more complex bended structures in that way uh, the next step is going to be to add to this with lipids and go to a different class a class called the phospholipids uh, so for a phospholipid we're still going to have the glycerol and we're still going to have the fatty acids but we're only going to have two and we're going to place the replace the third one with something else okay